about frequency of claims and until people start dropping with letter in the, the, the amounts they do, then they, we will have to clean it up on the regular basis. So it's not actually rocket science. Uh, so we have to change it is for the good of the environment. You know, you can, there's now we're making discussions about which is good letter and which is bad letter. It depends what it is. People seem to think we're picking on people who smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes kill human beings. Yeah. Imagine what they're doing in waterways. Imagine what they're doing in the environment. What they're doing to, to local, you know. So cigarettes and you can uh, say cigarettes are worse than say a crisp packet or worse than something else. So my my sort of question is that if there is that sort of public perception or public concern, is there a possibility that you know, I just raised the question of, of graduating fines? Okay. So you, know, you get you get done worse for one particular issue. You get done worse for dog farming. Certainly, a yeah, dif differential between the fine for dog farming. Um, I will come on to my pet hate, and I have mentioned it every time we have this conference. I believe that dog farming is decreasing. Again, we be more responsible dog owners are out there. <coughs> so what isn't being 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 monitored, or what isn't the response to that? Is what they do with the dog ears yeah. in the black bag. Yeah. And I think people, it resonates with people. You see them hanging in trees, you see them thrown to the side. And my view would be that that is a trend, a behavioural trend, that people think, oh, I've done the job, I've picked the, you know, the doings up in the bag, it's pleasant or unpleasant it is, and then lob, lob over, be, be thrown into a bush. Now I'd like to see that be a concentration for, for efforts, as well as the actual act of dog farm, or what to do, because it, to my mind, I'd rather tread on a, a tissue than a bag full of dog crap, to be frankly honest. So I think there may be some merit in, in differential and being able to target where we believe behaviour is getting worse rather than better. So the And the other thing, I don't know whether officers are aware or are involved officers and people who are aware of it. Have you seen the tiny bit campaign about the watching guys? Where, where, um, I don't know whether they know this because. A lot of dog farming takes place in the hours of darkness when people think they can get away with everything. And it's this campaign that seems to have an effect on its posters, but the eyes on the posters are luminous. And it, it almost makes you think if you watch this uh, as, as you're in the area. I just wonder whether officers, along with the enforcement and the education, where dog farming is particularly bad, we've had a look at that particular campaign. So I'll raise those that were the differential for Kingdom, whether we can have a differential scale and certainly concentrate um, on, you know, uh, uh, as I understand it, uh, throwing a, dog, a bag full of dog gears is the same fine as throwing a tissue of crisp packet a cigarette. Uh, and certainly, in my mind, I had to grow a trend that people would want. Uh, I refuse to say the word stamp out because they wouldn't want to stamp it out. Thank you. My understanding of the Constitution is that the Cabinet member can, can attend the committee and can speak to the committee yeah. at the invitation of the Chair. Yeah. And then that's my understanding, that that's how it is. The Cabinet member doesn't have to attend the scrutiny committee, so thank Council on each for attending tonight, in the business committee last night, when the Cabinet member didn't attend. And, and, and that's how it is, it will go from sometimes they'll be here, maybe sometimes they won't for whatever reason. Absolutely. Thank you. I didn't actually finish my question earlier. Sorry. So I'd also like to thank Councillor Lisa Leach for, for stepping in and I hope that other cabinet members follow her good example. Um, the question is around the, the nature of the contract as expressed in the outcomes. So I'd like to know that the 78,000 um, collected in income over in the three month period, how much of that went to Kingdom? that went to the council and any other destinations. Okay, so a breakdown a breakdown of the the costs for the income yeah. will share the ones on the registry. Yeah. That's what the next Okay, we will have to provide that. Yeah. Council is the only one to say something. Thanks, Chair. Uh, it was just a question about how things are paid. With regards to some of the stuff that happened, the other thing uh, highlighted on social media, it's 
seems to be um, an assumption that, that they pay for such a piece work um, and that they have a certain key performance target that they need to meet on a daily basis and um, rather than being paid for, say, X hours work and being paid an hourly rate, how can we make sure that we have that information in the report case and try and run it? Yes, we can. So if, if the pay for eight hours and work eight hours, it's not job and job. Can I thank everyone for the contributions for that particular item? And I'd like to go to item five. Sorry, everyone's happy to note the report. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to go now to item five. Pleasure and Cultural Services Review Update. Uh, I'm, before I ask Andrew to speak, I'm mindful of the fact that we do have a workshop next week which will cover some of these topics. Um, and I'd just like members to be aware of that uh, as Andrew did in his update. Andrew, the floor to yours. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, as you rightly point out, um, in many ways this is a, a general position on the report. Uh, there is obviously uh, detail which you will see next week uh, as Chief of the Budget Cabinet Scrutiny sessions on two items that are listed there. One of those is obviously the floor and one of them is the, uh, the, golf, uh, the golf courses. So this report is a general position on the report. It talks about um, the BWB report that was delivered to the council in December last year, and paragraph three run through lists some of the recommendations within that report. Principle, of, principle, I suppose, amongst the is the idea that BWB were recommending that all the services under review, so that's parks, countryside leisure, golf, floral, museum service, would ultimately be taken and put into a, an alternative delivery. There are a couple of things that occurred subsequent to that, that, that recommendation which changed the landscape quite dramatically. One of those was that the, um, the Cabinet obviously uh, approved uh, the news development, uh, as it, or approved views as the proposed partner in the growth company. And therefore, the use of assets became quite paramount within that deal. And obviously, some of those assets, so it's not something that BWB report would necessarily support because they were talking about taking assets and putting them into the alternative delivery That was the first thing. The second thing was that there was a change in VAT ruling in uh, January of last year, which meant that trusts at that stage could benefit from certain um, exempt VAT exemption that council couldn't. And uh, there was a ruling, uh, the ED ruling, that actually leveled that plan. So it means now that councils can benefit from uh, VAT exemption on certain things. Now, I think also there was a, chair, a general feeling from members, cabinet members in particular, that actually these services were incredibly complex. They had different income strands and needs and, and requirements, and actually placing them into one pot was not uh, something that was suitable. And indeed, I believe this was something that uh, members of this panel had sort of similarly concluded uh, in, uh, in their uh, workshop in September 2017. So as I said at the top of this piece, um, this is a position of report. It sort of uh, gives you some idea about certain things that are, are, are coming forward in the next uh, a few months. Um, floral and golf courses are two propositions that have come forward to cabinet already. Uh, obviously we have uh, the library services, leisure services, park services, and that lasted in culture, in terms of the Williamson, Mark Gallery Museum, and Priory. And there was still uh, discussion going on about those elements. Uh, nothing has been decided, but as soon as it has, and it's gone to Cabinet, then obviously I will be coming back to talk to you about those specific elements. Thank you, Chair.
Is there, is there a risk that some of the more popular uh, options that you know, are the probably split them up, they're going to get snapped up by commercial companies because they have potential commercial gain? The council's not been able to realise themselves. I know we've had many conversations about the council not being able to get realise all the potential golf courses for whatever reason. And I've got the thought that we much could be a you know, could be a money spinner for the company that takes it over, but the council will be releasing that asset. But when we get down to things like libraries, it's going to be much harder to find someone who's going to want to run a library service because there's no, there's no money to be made as, as such, unless we've got some you know, interesting novel ideas as to how that would happen. So it is the risk that we'll lose the bits that we could actually make some money out of and, and still end up with the, the parts that the council are going to struggle to find someone to take over and we're losing the ability to sort of cross populate the funds if you like. Chair, if I may, uh, yes, uh, it, it, it's a good question. So the, the, uh, the different models that are being uh, talked about are not exclusively about taking services and placing them outside or getting a contractor to run them. There is a recognition, I think, uh, amongst cabinet members that actually in-house is also very suitable for certain things. But actually having control over that does exactly what you suggested. It, it's not actually hiding add value out to others, it's about keeping that, reshaping that, but the discussion is still about how you do that, and what architecture you use to do that, and that discussion is yet to be finalised. Councillor Smith. Yeah, thanks Chair. Uh, um, the BWB report and, that, and the further research, has this committee ever seen that report in the further research. Chair, for you know, it, it won't be done because it hasn't, uh, to my knowledge, been released uh, to this committee. Okay, can I come back to the second question, Chair? Um, I'm interested in the um, hearing ruling um, that came out. What kind of implications would that have for our leisure centres, golf courses, you know, with, with that? I mean, can you give it sort of an idea? Um, the Ealing Room uh, basically says that for sports related activity, uh, the uh, essential leisure element can retain the VAT. The benefit of that is around a uh, million pounds a year. Rather than say, uh, taking that as a saving, uh, the council has actually used uh, the receipts, potential receipts from the VAT to uh, put into the services to make sure that their income lines are realistic and reduce the chance of overspending. The, the expected benefits from that have already been built, built into this year's budget. Um, it's not a sort of benefit because it relates to sports activities that you see uh, in relation to the or, uh, or, or broadly, it is largely around the leisure centres. Thank you, Jim. Andrew, we're talking about golf courses, and, and uh, from what I saw in the report, we're talking about Mellor Park and one of us. Uh, I can understand why the Holy Municipal isn't in there, because of obvious reasons, because the leader of the council wants to pursue his really golf resort folly. But can you tell me why Frackingwood isn't in there? We, we know golf is a declining sport across the border. Why is the council only putting two golf courses up for potential management by, by the companies uh, and not Brackenwood? And you mentioned before the partnership with Newt. Does that mean Brackenwood becomes an asset that would, would go into the Willow Rail Company? Uh, Chair, uh, the reason that Brackenwood isn't uh, currently in any uh, proposition uh, around golf is because it's part of the uh, spaces review. Uh, and until that review is actually finalised, then uh, the council makes a decision on that review following consultation. Uh, there will be no decisions made on Bracken Wood Golf Course. Can I come back on that, Chair? Why then is not Hyde Park part of the Green Spaces Review and the Wallops? Why are they not formed part of the same review and yet they've been put forward? Uh, Chair, because they are active golf courses, they are not part so, uh, so uh, they're not part of the 
in Green Space Review, which is linked, as so far as I understand. So they, they're, in, they're discrete areas that currently dog courses. That, that, that's why they form part of the dog course review. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm obviously looking at one or two events that took place before I, I, I joined the council, but as far as I can see, BWB was asked to give a report to us, um, which they did last March, and then they were asked to give a, a full business case, which was presented less than a year ago, um, and yet it seems that their recommendations and advice is now being superseded by our, um, our, our determination to go on with the, the Rural Growth Company. Um, I'm curious to know just how much we spent on getting this advice from the BWB and um, what that figure was, and was that really good use of money if we're not taking any notice of it? Chair, uh, we've been jumping to be the report was uh, before my sort of tenure there within uh, the uh, sort of directed role of programmes for this particular um, sort of set of services, so I'd have to um, get that information and uh, give it to members of the later vote. Okay, thanks very much for that, Andrew. If, if you could take that question away with you and get us that information, please. Um, Councillor Mosgrass. Yeah, I want to follow on from what, um, this is just a Not a question. 
questions that Chair and I agree with Councillor Mustras, I remain unconvinced about the motives for not including Bracken uh, and I'll draw my own conclusion because I'm sure Councillor Mustras will. Okay, thanks, thanks for that. Do we have any more questions? Okay, before we move on to noting the reports, if you read the recommendations, the recommendations quite clearly say the committee is requested to note the content of the report and support the revised approach to considering the future delivery of leisure and cultural services. That last part of the recommendation.